Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Sagittarius is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything at all. Uh, if there is anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Sagittarius, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that. We've got the star card right away, right off the bat. First card out is that star. That's beautiful. Let's put that into some context. That is a sense of uh, destiny. You know, I think this is really giving you um, a look uh, deeper into your soul, deeper into your desires. And we match that up with the tower card. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's see what else we've got. Hanged man. Hierophant. Five of Wands, Three of Wands, Three of Pentacles, Queen of Cups, the Moon, and the Six of Wands. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, a lot of majors here too. I feel like um, I feel like this. I feel like this twelve twelve New Moon portal is really opening your eyes to something. Now, first let's uh, let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one uh, random card. You know, this one seems like it wants to come out. And we're gonna put Tiny Bob Ross right there on top. We're not gonna look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together. And it will give us the confirmation that we need right at the end of the reading. If at any point during the reading you feel like you might know what that card is, I want you to put a prediction down in the comments. All right, let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise in intuition. All right, let's get started. Uh, we've got major, 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 major. Fire, fire, fire. We've got a little bit of water. No air. A little bit of uh, earth energy here. So the absence of the air energy, this is not something that you're trying to figure out rationally. You're not trying to do the math on this. Um, this is more of uh, more of an intuitive kind of revelation, especially when we get these two cards together. This is a destiny, and this is this really is an eye-opening revelation, right? You're perceiving the truth, and then you're speaking the truth, and it's because you've got this star energy. So let's start with this, um, the star card. Um, some of you might have a very strong Aquarius placement in your chart. But I feel like you're someone who really um, tries to follow like the, that starlight, you know, that you have a lodestar. You have something in your life that just means everything to you. It could be God, goddess, deity, guardian angel, spirit guides, ancestors, whatever you want to call it, universal mind, right? There's kind of this one guiding light, guiding principle for you. Okay, and I think this is what you fall back on. This is what you kind of, um, well, this is what leads you forward. This is what you, what you pray to, you know, honestly. Um, I feel like some of you have like a favorite, um, maybe a favorite window in your house, right? Or a favorite spot in your yard or maybe at a park or I don't know, somewhere. But a favorite place where you like to kind of look outside, where you like to look out the window or look up at the stars and just kind of uh, just kind of daydream, you know, or wish even, or pray, or aspire, or yearn, right? But I get this feeling of a, of like a, a certain spot for you, like a certain window in your house or something. Um, and honestly, I think right now you're you're gonna see kind of a, a shooting star. You're gonna see almost a comet gonna just kind of blaze through the sky. Um, something is being revealed to you, and I think it is something that is taking you to the next level of your life. 
the next level of this um, this spiritual existence of ours. Okay, and the tower, yes, it it might be somewhat disruptive. It might be a rather abrupt change, especially when we see the hierophant coming uh, as the kind of um, the momentum that we have is this kind of you know it's very steady, it's very even, it hasn't, it's not really. Not much has changed in a while, and then, bam, it gets a tower, right? So the Hierophant is kind of the way we've always been doing things. It's saying that we've been slow and steady, we've been persistent, we've been showing up every day. We've been, you know, we've been doing the right things. Nothing much has changed. You know, and for some of this could be a work thing. For some of you, it could be a romantic relationship. This could be talking about your family. It's a life reading. Right? I don't like to kind of pigeonhole these cards and say, well, this is, this is your career. You've been kind of on the same, the same career path for years now. It's time to make a very abrupt change. Well, maybe, yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Right? I don't think change is coming. I think you might be the change. Right? You might feel this kind of this inspiration that I've got to do something major in my life you know we're looking out the window here and maybe you're reflecting on kind of just how steady things have been and i think you may come to a realization that something has got to give you've come to this deeper um perception of your own truth with that eye that's at the very top there um, and now you're going to do something about it. Now you're going to scream it from the mountaintops. Right? Now we're going to speak that into existence because, because of this hanged man down here. I think the hanged man is one of these uh, cards about realization that we don't really want to, we don't, we don't like to be here. Right? The hanged man is kind of this involuntary suffering, right? Um, what I think it represents in your case is perhaps being a little cut off from the spirit in a way. Um, I think you always follow your, your load star, your guiding principle, your, that star energy. But I feel deep down um, that maybe we've been cut off from the kind of experience of life that we want, the depth of emotion, the depth of that spiritual feeling, the intensity of the, that passion, that spiritual love, right? Maybe some of you have are, are starting to come to this awareness that we've slowed down on some of our spiritual practices, right? That we're getting, we're so kind of staying the course, we're so wrapped up in that momentum, that very steady progress that we don't realize that we've slowly been abandoning some of our spiritual or religious or magical practices. Maybe we don't gaze out that window as often as we used to, right? Maybe we don't pray as, as deeply or as often as we used to. This is kind of a card that says we've, we don't realize it, but we've slowly been getting further and further away from that real watery essence of life, that real spiritual connection. And maybe the Hierophant says, yeah, we still, I still gaze out the window. I still do my, my rituals, my prayers, my ceremonies, my, you know, my magical acts and stuff. But the hanged man is saying, even if that's the case, it doesn't have that same depth of spirit as it used to. And I think you're coming to that realization, and that's why something's got to change. It, it has to be a kind of radical change. Um, it doesn't mean you have to leave your job. We still have this very wonderful Hierophant. Things are on a very nice track. Let's stay. Let's keep things on course, right? The radical change has to be in our experience of life. You know, um, we don't have to completely change our lives in order to have that spiritual experience, right? That's not gonna. That's not gonna do anything but really disrupt your life. See, the tower could be just completely destructive. Every card has light and shadow. The tower could really tear this whole castle down. The whole life that you're building 
just demolish it. We don't want that. Right? We don't want that. This is the wake-up call. This is the idea that there needs to be this kind of radical spiritual change, a spiritual kind of reorientation. Right? Um, the way you used to look up at the stars and you'd feel this sense of just humbleness or magic or awe, splendor, wonder. Now we look up at the sky and we just think, I got to clean my glasses or, you know, I got to squint more now than I used to. Um, or, uh, oh, it's cold out here. I should really take the trash out and go back inside. Um, there's that kind of, um, I think as we age, we get further and further away from that pure experience of the universe, you know. And um, I think the tower is, is forcing us to realize that and saying that we've got to strip away all this... Um, kind of mental clutter. Maybe that's why we don't have any swords, right? We're stripping away all these worries that say, I gotta clean my glasses, my eyes don't work as well as they used to, I should take out the trash, it's cold, I gotta go back inside. You know, the, the cats are probably, you know, sneaking out the front door. Um, all these things that go through your head when you're just trying to experience the night sky, right? We don't see that here. The swords are gone. This is the ability to experience nature, experience the divine, experience the night sky, experience your soul, your spirit, destiny, God, goddess, deity, whatever you want to call it. In a pure way, with a mind uncluttered by worries and the kind of mundane concerns, even if it's just for a moment, you know, even if it's just for a moment. Now, up above everything, five of wands. I feel like you're a very even-tempered person. I feel like you're very fair, very tolerant, very patient. But lately, uh, lately things seem like they're frustrating you more. You know, as, well, I mean, we're getting closer to the holidays now for sure, so I can see that kind of happening for a lot of us. But I just, I think generally it's more and more things are frustrating you. Things are kind of getting on your nerves that never really used to, right? And I think it's all part of this thing that we're talking about. Because there was a time where you could find spirit, you could find God, goddess, deity, you could find the divine in vacuuming the carpet, right? Washing the windows, whatever, driving to work, sitting in traffic. Right, talking on the phone with, with customers or whatever it is that we do. Um, but now it feels like all those little things are just a burden, annoying, right? And I think it's because we don't have that, that connection, let's say, with the, with the night sky anymore. That kind of blessed everything, made everything a, a holy moment. So now we do these ordinary mundane things and we just think that they're just ordinary and mundane things that have pushed out the spiritual life. But that's not, that's, I don't think that's an accurate perception. I don't think that's what happened because we've always had to do those mundane things. But now our lives are so busy, we don't have time to experience the divine. No, we do. We do. We just have to reconnect with it, you know, find it in, in all of those moments. And I think really the absence of swords is, is really spot on today, because I think that's the perfect way to, to express this, that if we, just, if we just clear our mind and allow that pure kind of starlight to come in, then um, in all of these mundane things, now we, we don't have to be so frustrated by them, because the frustration, well, what is that? What does that equate to? Well, in our mind, we're thinking, God, do I have to do this again? I don't want to make this phone call. I wish the traffic would hurry up. I'm going to be late. I got to feed the dog, take out the cat, and you know, mow the lawn, do my homework, all this stuff. We, we just silent. We quiet. You know, A little bit of silence goes a long way. And we do those things. We do our routine things, but there's a deeper deeper sense of meaning. This is the three of wands. This is in the kind of future or the way forward position. And this is understanding the process of creation on the creative, psychic, spiritual plane. So this is kind of um, 
This is a car that understands that what you set your mind to, the intention that you put out into the world, is going to trickle down to your water energy, to your air energy, to your earth energy. Right? Fire's at the very top. The three is at the very top. It's a deeper, it's a, a higher understanding of how things work, you know, in, within yourself, in the universe, in your soul and spirit. So it's really a card about setting the intention. You know, and it's hard to do in, in each moment when we're sitting in traffic, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's hard to remember to do in all of those moments. So it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a spiritual practice all by itself. It's a meditation that lasts all day long. Right? Trying to bring your awareness back to that kind of fiery spiritual center, you know, when you notice that you've you're mentally you've been kind of off on a tangent. Well, let's let's find those moments. Let's go back to the window. Go back to that favorite spot that you had, or maybe you still have. If it's a window, if it's a place in the woods, if it's you know um, a play, if it's a park, if it's somewhere in your backyard, go to your little magic spot that that is like that window, whether it's, maybe it's a literal window. Um, but it's kind of a window to that magic, a window to the wonder of the universe. And let's figure out how to take ourselves back there, even in the middle of a, of a chaotic, hectic life. Take two seconds and tap into that feeling, you know, and, and say a little prayer or a little mantra or something that can put you back in that in that feeling and allow that feeling allow that kind of spiritual feeling to trickle down to your mind your heart your body and that's going to move us to the path of the serpent uh, and as i do this i'd like to ask for your subscription if you haven't subscribed yet please do it's totally free doesn't cost you anything and it helps out the channel right it's good for the channel here leave some comments too i really do love uh, reading the comments from all of you i love hearing about where all of you are from because we're so so spread out here. There's the audience here. You guys are like all over the world. And I, I really find that fascinating. Okay. Uh, going from the Three of Wands to the Three of Pentacles now. Fire to Earth. Fire to Earth. So if we can really get in touch with our bodies. If we can take these brief moments. Go, go sit by your favorite window. Right? And... Um, and use that as an opportunity to just be in your body. Just feel, feel the weight of your body right now. You know, do you feel any kind of tingling sensations? Is there any point um, kind of along your, um, your spinal column that feels a little bit heavier or a little bit warmer than you know, the rest of those places? Let's really tap into how we feel right now in this moment. Right. Let's experience, let's, let's look at that night sky, right? Let's gaze out the window, um, literally or, or figuratively, and find that spiritual feeling and connect that with our bodies. Let's really ground that. That's what we want to create in daily, daily life. You know, we want that feeling to be present in every moment. That's a feeling of holiness, right? That's a feeling of the divine in in the, the physical life. So the three of pentacles is understanding the process of creation on the physical plane. Understanding that what the, um, what the body is feeling, what the body is doing, is kind of trickling, trickling upwards, right? It's affecting your mind, your heart. It's affecting your spirit. Um, so we have to be aware, we have to, we have to get in touch with our bodies again, you know. We have to learn um, what we like and what we don't like, you know. Um, do you ever kind of just stop when you're, you're driving or don't, you know, stop when you're driving? Um, you're sitting at your desk at work or something and you realize that you've been holding your body in a very weird position. You know, or that you've been like, sometimes I rest my elbows on the table here and I realize I'm really uncomfortable, you know. Um, 
Do we ever notice that? Or do we try to just kind of disconnect from that and not acknowledge that? You know, uh, how many times have you been sitting at work and then after hours you you get up and you realize, man, I've just been like, my neck's been all weird, my legs have been all twisted. Um, we've really lost connection with our, our physical existence, you know. And um, I think a lot of us spend time in the air energy. And again, another reason why I'm glad there's no swords cards here. We have time to connect with spirit. All these cards are spiritual cards, the major arcana. Connect with spirit. Find these opportunities to, to have a sense of holiness, right? To have a sense of love and this kind of divine wonder and vision and the depth, sense of the mystery and of, even of the fear, right? Even of the unknown. And all this spiritual energy then through the fire energy, through the will, the intention, the awareness, the consciousness, trickles down to your heart and your body. You know, I mean, it bypasses the, the mental energy because the mind is always going to do what the mind does. The mind is tasked with solving problems, figuring things out, sorting things, doing paperwork. Right, making phone calls, all that kind of stuff, the scheduling. Um, and that's fine. We don't need to stop doing any of that. We just need to bring in this deeper sense of connection into what we're doing. So, next card in the environment is the Queen of Cups, a real depth of emotion, right? A depth of feeling. This is now the hanged man that's no longer suspended over the water, but is splashed has just dived headfirst right into that into that feeling. And this really is going to it's going to affect your interactions with people. And maybe this is one way to then start operating from the heart level. And that's going to trickle down to the body and it's going to trickle up to the mind and spirit too. And I think that this really is about making connections with other people, finding those moments to um to experience someone else. You know, it's a coworker or other people on the road. It's just like we're all these little like um, aggregates of consciousness, but it's we're all connected, right? We're all just kind of we're um, we're all just like cups full of water out of the ocean. You know, uh, driving around in cars and and making telephone calls. Um, but I think a lot of this is going to it's going to influence how you interact with others. And there's a real depth here, you know. I think I think that's important to you, and I think that's one, um, perhaps one reason why there's this frustration right now is because we just we look at we look at our relationships sometimes as obligations, sometimes as frustrations. You've got to call the customer. You've got to go deal with your coworkers or talk to your boss or something. And it's usually this very swords-like energy, right? Very air swords kind of um, interactions. And it's usually we're either sorting stuff out, we're defending ourselves, or we're attacking. There's, it's always a sword fight. It doesn't matter, you know. And I don't think you, you appreciate that. I don't think you, you want life to be that way. We still need the air energy, and the air energy is here. It's just not the focus. We're saying, okay, well, let the mind do the be the mind. We'll let the let the intellect do what it needs to do to get things done. Um, but we have to connect with our spiritual selves, with our physical selves, with our intuitive, compassionate, empathic, um, you know, watery selves as well. So I like that we have all of this water. Um, really congregated in the position of your environment and your relationship with the environment. And this is the sense of love and, and holiness and connection with everything, with, with physical objects, with nature, with other people, with animals, plants, right? With the night sky, with just literally everything outside of you, right? It's kind of bathed in this holiness, now, the next card is the moon, 
and this is the uh, this is the fear of the unknown. And this is a kind of a big contrast between the hierophant. Now, this I think is really where life is changing because this is kind of uh, steady on track. The hierophant is um, kind of conforms. It's very predictable, very expected. We know what's coming next. It's all mapped out, right? Then we got this tower energy. We got this kind of wake up. We've got this spiritual activation now. Now we're kind of looking forward to the mystery. Now I'm excited about what's coming next because I don't know what it's going to be. You know? Usually this card is saying, well, we don't want, you know, and it's in the position of what we typically don't want, right? It's right here in its usual place. Fear of the unknown. We don't want to be afraid of the unknown. Maybe this is the card where maybe we're rejecting that energy now. Maybe we're not afraid of the unknown. Maybe now we want the unknown. We want the mystery. We want the uncertainty. We want to feel like there's some part of life that is still a mystery, that there's still some sort of a meaning of life that will be revealed to us, that there's still something um, magical out there to discover. We don't want everything to be predictable. We don't want a map of everything. Sometimes, you know. So I like this card. This is saying that we still have dreams and, and nightmares, um, that we kind of love equally, right? We're just, we're ready. We're ready for something uh, intense to come. No, I don't think, I don't think that, um, I don't think we're waiting for that. I think we're kind of making it happen. You know, and I think it really comes back to us gazing out that window and seeing that shooting star, seeing that comet and realizing this is a sign, this is an omen. I've got to start pursuing things that maybe it takes me off a little bit off of this track. Um, but it's, it's leading to a deeper, richer, more value-filled life. We're not trying to destroy what we've built. We're trying to augment it. We're trying to enhance it trying to add value, add meaning, add depth to what we're doing, to our experience of life. Even if that means that we are going to um, really put forth this effort to find the love and the holiness in our environment. Right? We're going to make this conscious um, effort with intent to be who we are, right? It's kind of a, a radical self-acceptance, an acceptance of the kind of life, the kind of experience that we want. Now we're going to go out and do it. We're going to talk to people. We're going to make connections, right? We're going to find the mystery, and we're going to we're going to go after our desires, our ambitions, with confidence. Here's the six of wands at the end, with a real confidence. Yeah, this is a car that, that wants the challenge because it's through challenge, it's through tower moments, it's through uncertainty and the unknown fear that we come to know ourselves more and more, deeper and deeper. And feeling that connection. See, this is a, the six of the six of wands is a few things, but it's also a doubling of the three, right? It's what happens when you put these two threes together, right? Three and three makes six. Or if we have this kind of intention, now this, this confidence and this um, intention connects with the external world, and we get, we get a really kind of a cooperative experience here. You know, and we may not triumph over every single challenge. We might not always be the winner in everything we attempt. And in some ways, it doesn't really matter. Right? It's through the experience. It's through the attempting. It's through just having the impulse and the intention and the will to go and do something for yourself that will enrich and enhance your life. That's the benefit. Not whether it succeeds or not, or what, you know, not how much you earn from it. Right? That's not the value. The value is in the doing of that thing, in the attempting of that thing. Let's look at the mystery card now. Yeah, I'm curious about this one. Um, what might it be? Well, 
maybe we'll see a little bit of that air energy. Maybe it'll be some swords. Uh, I, I'd be okay with swords. If it's an ace of swords, I'd be okay. If it's a six of swords, I'd be okay. But really, any of the swords, we can handle it, right? We know they're here, and we're not trying to ignore them. We're just trying to focus on the other things and not let that air energy kind of rule our lives, rule our, our consciousness. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. All right, let's see what we've got. Oh, we've got the world card. This is, this is better than swords, but it includes the swords, right? This is having a life that is full. This is having a life that is complete, right? This is, um, this is kind of saying like, I don't know what the problem is, but I'll know the solution when I feel it. You know, it's kind of a car that sometimes wants us to ask the questions, but this is just like, um, I, I don't know what question to ask, um, but I'll, I'll know the answer when when I experience it, when I feel it, when I find it, you know. Um, this is an, another kind of card that says we're, we're kind of looking up at the night sky, and we are, yes, we are looking for our very own star, for our path, where we should be, um, where we should be aiming our life, right? Aiming our consciousness. But we're learning to appreciate the entire uh, diversity of the universe, of the cosmos, right? There are a lot of stars out there. Some of them are for us, some of them aren't. We can appreciate all experience, right? We're not rejecting anything, really. Even the fear, even, the, even this moon energy, even the nightmares, even the uncertainty, we're not rejecting it. We're saying, I, I'm not gonna be afraid of it, right? Because you never know where the answer will lie. We don't really know what the questions are. We've got to look everywhere for the answer, right? We can find holiness in every experience, even in the traffic, even in the having to call customers or cold calling or whatever. I used to hate that. I think this is a really good card. I think we're, we're moving into a much more holistic, a much more balanced life in ourselves and in our interactions with the rest of the world, you know. Anyway, we're going to do an extended reading. If you want to stick around, click on the link up here in the corner. That'll give you access to all of the extended readings. I'm here every day from 6 to 8 a.m. Chicago time. So come back and see me again tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, your specific Sagittarius readings are every Wednesday and Sunday. But you can come every day, right? There's plenty of room. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free, doesn't cost you anything. And leave some comments for me. I really do appreciate all of the comments. If you have a small business or a website or a band or a book or anything to promote, head over to the Dove and Serpent Tarot channel page. And in the community section, the very first post is a place for everybody to go and plug their stuff, promote your stuff, put your website in there, put the name of your book or your YouTube channel or whatever, right? Um, let's all support each other, okay? So that's, that's a place. I'm going to keep that post at the very top so that you can always go there and uh, plug away, you know? I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you and we're all in this together.